Hey everybody, welcome to the Swamp Gump Harpy, where we take old, used up 400 EXs uh, and we convert them into something special and different and unique. Uh, today we're going to do a top end speed test on this 2002 model 400 EX uh, with a 440 big bore kit built into it. Uh, basically this big bore kit has been put on, many renovations, uh, uh, this whole process of renovating this thing has been done and uh, the motor's been broken in. And that's it. So, I mean, this is, I think that was about eight months ago that the motor was rebuilt and broken in. And uh, we're going to check it out today for the first time. We're going to ride it. And a lot of parts are going to break because that's what happens the first time that you take out a, a rebuilt quad is it starts to break. And uh, you find out things that you did wrong and a couple of bolts that maybe you should have torqued a little better. But uh, when we ride it today, we're going to check the top end speed on it. And... Uh, so a couple of things to keep in mind on this quad with the top end speed we're running a 36 rear Renthal sprocket to a 14 speed I call them speed gear uh, 14 gear uh, 14 tooth uh, front sprocket so 36 14 ratio on the rear to front sprocket uh, that's going to affect our speed just so you know though that uh, that ratio is great for torque great for acceleration um, on this quad, we're running the 10 ply tires, and uh, we run the 10 plies because this quad sees a lot of time on the asphalt. Uh, and a lighter ply is probably going to get worn out pretty fast. And so, uh, but the 10 plies are heavy, and that's going to affect our top end speed as well. And so, uh, whatever we find out today doesn't necessarily mean that's as fast as a 440 uh, EX will go. That's just as fast as this one will go. Uh, if you play with that ratio with your sprockets and uh, and you look for ways to reduce weight, uh, you can absolutely achieve some significantly faster speeds. Uh, we're just kind of curious to know, after quite a bit of work on this thing, how fast will she run? And then also when we do the uh, when we run this down the road, uh, we're going to see if. The information shows up on our speedometer if it doesn't i'm going to be reading it while i ride if it doesn't show up to you guys at least i'm going to uh, check it and then i'll let you know whatever it says whatever the speedometer says but we'll sh we'll show you that video either way whether it shows up on our speedometer or not on uh, on that gopro footage uh, when we take these four wheelers out a lot of times we go out into some pretty remote locations and uh way out where we don't have any cell phone service and so uh we like to use this garmin inreach mini um, and uh, so we're not able to make phone calls on it but we are able to uh, send and receive text messages when we send those text messages uh, it uh, whoever we send the text message to it will uh, send location data to them there's also an SOS button located up underneath this cover here um, if we have to hit that SOS button uh, it'll send a signal to rescuers that uh, 
will also have our, our uh, location information and so rescuers will come and find us and we can be far away from any kind of cell service and um, and get that information um, just off of this now uh, what's kind of handy about this is today we're going to test and see if when we ride if uh, if we're going to be able to see this but we're uh, there's a miles per hour uh, uh, speedometer on this inReach Mini and so uh, we're going to test our top speed today um, using this inReach Mini, the speedometer that's built into this and uh, see how fast this uh, 400EX with a 440 big bore kit will go. brake lines here and if you're not familiar with core c-o-r-e uh, check them out coremoto.com for their brake lines you can have these fully customized whatever colors you want uh, banjo bolts on this particular one we ordered them because we're a little over the top we're a little eccentric so we ordered these uh, in 14 karat gold plated and um, these are handmade when you order them uh, they're handmade and uh, we loved it because the the uh, color on these in the front matches the color of the plastics that we have on this quad. Uh, in the back, for whatever random reason, we decided to put yellow uh, as the sheathing, the heat sheathing on these. Uh, and these look great. You really wouldn't think that brake lines would change the look of a four-wheeler as much as these have, but they look great. And so, uh, now we did order the ones in the back a little bit long, uh, about three inches long to accommodate for an extended swing arm uh, down the road. And uh, actually, we were just gonna tell you guys that the truth is uh, we, we just made a mistake and we mismeasured. First first thing we did was we eyeballed the, the swing arm and ordered them at, I don't know, like 17 inches, way too short. Went back and measured the OEM brake lines and could swear that we came up with 31 inches. So we ordered 31 inches and we're a little long. And so we wrapped around the front and back onto the uh, onto the master cylinder in the back. Uh, it looks all right, and we got a little extra length if we do want to put in a swing arm down the road. Uh, so back uh, when we started this build back in 2016, um, I've been I, I 
I started back then looking for a good set of foot pegs for this 400EX. And everything that I could find uh, included the Nerf bars, which uh, I was not interested in getting foot pegs with Nerf bars. I wanted the standalone foot pegs. And uh, got a comment just a couple of days ago from a guy who's not even a follower on our uh, Swamp Gum Harpy channel, but uh, I, well, I, don't, I don't think he is. I didn't even check, but uh, maybe he is. But uh, he dropped in, mentioned uh, P4 quads, foot pegs. These things are, uh, I believe he said that they're water jetted and then powder coated. They look outstanding and uh, very aggressive. They really bite into your boot. Um, so you go to p4quads.com, that's P as in Paul, four, the number four, quads, so p4quads.com, and I think I ordered these last week, we went on a little trip uh, for about four days, came home, and these were waiting for me in the mailbox, uh, they bolted right up, uh, something to note is that these sit about a half inch behind the, the placement of the stock foot pegs. It's about a half inch behind, so uh, it will. If you're just, if you've ridden your 400 EX a lot and you're really accustomed to the placement of your boot on your foot bag, you're going to notice the difference. Um, but I think what you're really going to notice is that you get a much wider uh, position for your boot to sit on, and um, you're going to notice that they look they look pretty damn sexy. They really do. Uh, I like how they're tapered up at the ends, uh, keeping your boot from slipping off. Uh, whoever makes these is somebody who has, uh, he's ridden quads before, uh, he knows a little bit about what he wanted, uh, and you can tell that he, uh, these are purpose built, and so I, when you start looking, so we've got a lot of money invested in this 400EX, when you start looking at different things that we put on this, uh, it's really tough to narrow down my favorite parts that we, we put on this 400EX, but the, uh, these foot pegs, are probably in my top 10 top 10 components that we've added so another thing that uh, aside from just the brake lines another thing that uh, just a minor tweak that we did since the last video is like a lot of folks we had gone on Amazon and bought uh, the rear brake uh, caliper and the rear brake master cylinder. We, we went on Amazon and bought just the very inexpensive aftermarket caliper and uh, master cylinder for the back of this, the back brakes on this bike. And when we decided to upgrade to the core brake lines, uh, something that I had noticed, we had never ridden the quad with that uh, cheap, I think it's like a $40 master cylinder. Um, and I noticed that already the uh, rubber grommet on the bottom or uh, like the, this little rubber like plunger on the bottom of that master cylinder and without ever having ridden this quad also keeping the quad the entire time in the garage so no uv damage that grommet had just cracked all apart and so we ended up going back full oem on the um, rear master cylinder and on the rear caliper we did go with and i've been very impressed with this brand and I mentioned this in my last video uh, outlaw racing on our disc on our rotor in the back uh, outlaw racing is a brand that I stumbled across for my uh, engine plugs like the little uh, aluminum plugs that go on the side of the engine covers and uh, stumbled across them uh, for those plugs found those plugs for cheap bottom and I was astounded at the quality of outlaw racing so I thought I would try their rotor as well and once again I'm, I'm just that impressed with how with outlaw racing so if you stumble across that brand you want to poke around at some of the things that they offer for your 400 ex i uh i've spared no expense on this build i think right now we're at like thirteen thousand four hundred dollars and so we spared no expense uh, by all means and outlaw racing is something that i would say i would recommend 100 percent as a top quality uh, part now um while we're on the subject i did also uh most of these older 400 EXs have a cracked hub, uh, the, the part that actually keeps uh, the mounts, the uh, rear brake rotor. And uh, one of the ears on this hub had broken off and so I did replace that uh, hub where the rotor mounts with a brand new OEM hub. Um, while we were in that process, uh, we went ahead and took the rear end apart and replaced the uh, rear 
um, carrier bearings. Uh, discovered on this that uh, the rear carrying is a Lone Star, and so if you got a Lone Star rear carrier, you're going to need the wider uh, aftermarket Lone Star or all balls uh, rear carrier bearings. We went with all balls, and the reviews are all over the planet. Maybe you love them, maybe you hate them. Um, the the bearings on a 400 EX simply don't last long. It doesn't matter if you go with the top quality or the cheapest thing on the market. And so you can pretty much anticipate that you're going to replace those bearings often. Um, and so that's what we did here. We replaced these bearings. And in the process, I stumbled across this. And this is on Amazon, guys. Uh, this um, oh, uh, nut kit, this axle nut kit. And so this comes with the sleeve and then both of the nuts and the pin, uh, the ring pin here. And uh, this was on Amazon. I can't remember what I paid for it. It was cheap, though. Ended up putting this on this build and then our next build that's in the garage right now. And, uh, man, talk about a way to really clean this up. So when, when we took all of this apart, uh, it's got brand new hubs on the back. It's got brand new bearings on the back. It's got a brand new uh, brake line, brake caliper, brake rotor, brand new uh, hub that holds on that brake rotor. And then uh, it's got the brand new uh, um, axle nuts. The whole thing comes together to really look clean and tidy back here. And we're just really pleased with how this uh, how this all worked out. Uh, I guess I say all that to say there there are certain parts that you can go OEM uh, that you should go OEM, and certain parts that you can get away with uh, just some aftermarket inexpensive parts you can find on Amazon or eBay. Uh, definitely that axle nut kit is a part that we recommend on Amazon. Can't remember what the brand was, but um, very inexpensive, well worth it. Okay, so in our last video, uh, we had a shifter from Mod Quad that was installed, and we're big fans of Mod Quad. They make some awesome stuff. Uh, but I had seen the Pro Design shifter, and at the time, it was like $110 everywhere I could find it. And I didn't want to spend that kind of money on a shifter, so we spent, uh, I think, like I don't know, $30 or $40 on our Mod Quad shifter, and it's great. We loved it. And then I stumbled across the Pro Design shifter for uh, 60 bucks. I think it was on eBay, brand new, $60. And so, if if you guys are on the, if, if you're trying to determine if you want to go with a, if, if you're wanting a, a, a aluminum or a billet aluminum shifter, and you're trying to determine if you want the Pro Design or the Mod Quad, uh, just be aware there is a significant difference between the quality of the pro design and the quality of the mod quad uh, one thing that this uh, the end the peg on the very end of the pro design the, the whole well the whole thing is one solid piece it's one solid piece on the mod quad this is actually a separate piece right here uh, on the mod quad you also have drilled ports here uh, and uh, that I'm sure reduces weight but it also makes it look a little bit more spindly uh, so we'll come over here real quick and check out So just not really a side-by-side -side comparison, but at least a comparison here um, on one quad versus the other. This this is the uh, the mod quad shifter, and it's great. Look, it's it's, it's a great shifter, but it's nowhere near as beefy looking or as impressive looking uh, as that Pro Design is. So if you're on the fence between the mod quad and the Pro Design with these billet shifters. Uh, we're pretty big fans of both of those companies, uh, but the Pro Design definitely is higher quality on this particular part.